This is Gita. She's the top champion of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and I think she's terrible. Her team consists of Aspartha, Go-Goat, Veluza, Avalog, King Gambit, and her ace, Glamora. And for what is supposed to be the top trainer of Paldia, it's just not a very well-constructed team. So today we're going to first talk about why her team is bad, and then make changes to her team to make it a truly scary fight. So to begin, I have three main problems with Gita's team. The first and most simple problem is actually the order of her Pokemon. I think if you did nothing but change her lead and ace, that would already make it a more interesting fight. My second issue with Gita is that her choices for Pokemon are also very questionable. It's a combination of using bad types, low stats, and less than ideal move pools. This is the biggest reason why I dislike her, but there is one more issue I take with Gita. Her team is forgettable. So if we're going to talk about a champion fight, it can't really be done without bringing up Cynthia. The reason I bring up Cynthia is because she is an iconic champion. Cynthia is memorable. Not only is Gita's team bad, but it is not memorable. You see this team right here? I would argue there are four, debatably five, truly iconic Pokemon on this team. Now, I know the game just came out, but I think we could say Gita has two Max? King Gambit and Glamora are noteworthy Pokemon, but I will give nothing else on this team the title of iconic. So, if we want to construct a good champion, I want to draw inspiration from a good example. Cynthia is strong, balanced, formidable, and she's got a slew of characters. Whereas Gita's team feels like a random handpicking of not only painfully mid Pokemon, but just forgettable personalities. So, Gita is not just easy, she's forgettable. How do we fix her? Well, to begin, I truly think we have to go in and just do a serious and brutal vetting of this team. And we'll start with their lead. Aspartha. One of the less major offenders on this team, I think there is a chance Aspartha can stay. This is a pure psychic type with 105 speed, 101 special attack. It's certainly one of the more challenging Pokemon on our team. So it's got decent stats, but Aspartha's signature move, Lumina Crash, has a base power of 80, and it's guaranteed to lower the opponent's special defense by two stages. It's a horrifyingly scary move, and it's basically a guaranteed two-hit KO. So that's good but it also has quick attack. Could someone please tell me why the champion has quick attack? Maybe we could swap that with Shadow Ball just to get some coverage in there. So I'm not fully convinced that even this upgraded Aspartha should stay, but I think it's not out of contention for her team either. Next up, we have Go-Goat, a pure grass type with the moves Horn Leech, Zen Headbutt, Play Rough, and Bulk Up. <sighs> okay. Yeah, this, this is about to get really bad. Do you guys want to play a game to make this less painful? Let's play the game. Why is this a terrible choice? Is it the fact that she has a monotype grass Pokemon? Is it that the previous Pokemon on her team also had psychic and fairy moves? Maybe it's that psychic and fairy do absolutely nothing to cover her very obvious bug, fire, ice, and flying weaknesses. Perhaps it's even that Go-Goat is an extremely forgettable Pokemon that wasn't even created in this generation. Well, the good news is, if you guessed any of those things, you are right. Like, please, genuinely, if I'm missing something here, let me know. But does it not seem like Go-Goat is not only a random pick, just a bad choice? It's just there with some random moves and pure grass typing. So I don't see any reason to keep this on the team. Now, next up is Volusia. And this is another extremely questionable pick. So I should first give points for this at least being native to Gen 9. And yeah, having a water type Pokemon on your team. Good job. Water type is good because it doesn't have a lot of weaknesses and covers a lot of things. Nice job, Champion Gita. In seriousness, I have nothing good to say about this pick. First, Veluza is part Psychic. So not only is this the third Pokemon in a row to have a Psychic move, but it's also a pretty redundant double dip of Psychic as a type. Veluza was also featured in the fourth gym. You're telling me that deserves to be on the Champions team? It's got middling stats across the board, with 102 attack being the only noteworthy thing. It's got bad defensive typing, major frailty, plus it's slow. This thing has no business being in the Elite Four, let alone on a champion team. Now, lastly of her elemental Pokemon, we have Avalug. Again, I just need to ask this, the same thing I've been wondering for these last two Pokemon. Why? Of the 
400 Pokemon in this game. They couldn't have gone with anything better than an Avalug. So to be fair, this thing actually has pretty good general coverage, but that's the only good thing I have to say about it. Despite Avalug's insane defense, it has 46 special defense and is pure ice type. I don't know how many times Game Freak needs to hear this, that is not defensive. It's like there's this giant 100 feet high wall that you can just walk right around and smack the person behind it. And furthermore, if we're trying to stay completely in the lines, like least amount of variation as possible for this team, why would you ever conceivably put Avalug on this team over Satitan? Satitan basically shares the same bulk, but it puts those stats into HP rather than a specific defense. On top of that, Satitan is just as strong and much faster, so I do not understand this decision at all. Now next up we have King Gambit, and this is the first Pokemon on the team that feels like true champion material. It's a more elusive, exclusive, and generally rarer Pokemon to come by. It's new to Gen 9, looks incredible, and is of course an actual powerhouse, unlike anything we have looked at so far. Its move pool is also really good. So then please, top champion Gita in all your wisdom, Tell me why this is not your ace. It's painfully slow, and painfully slow Pokemon with 4x weaknesses are not good. So it's a good choice, but a bad placement. Now lastly, we have Glamora. So its move Terra Blast can easily be replaced with Power Gem, and Sludge Wave is a great move, but it does not make sense for this to be an ace. And for all you hair copium enthusiasts, I would argue King Gambit has a more similar hairstyle to her than Glamora. Glamora's also got a 4x weakness to ground and has nothing to cover it, so at the very least we can swap out Dazzling Gleam for energy ball that would also cover its weakness to water but we'll get to its final placement a little later so Gita's team is painfully mid King Gambit Espartha and Glamora are decent team choices but her go go Falooza and Avalug are undebatably awful their typings are badly chosen they're easily beatable and they contribute very little to making her sound and formidable not to even begin on the note of iconic okay don't forget iconic so with that we're not going to make just one team for Gita we're actually going to make two the first is going to be your safe risk aversive less creative team we're gonna be kind and assume Game Freak generally knew what they were doing, right? So we're gonna keep Espartha as lead and we'll just replace Quick Attack with Shadow Ball. Go Goat is of course getting switched and its replacement will be the very obvious and, and downright frustrating that it wasn't included choice of our Bolova. Like what? Why didn't they pick this? Our Bolova is a bulky grass type with grassy terrain and terrain pulse. And basically if this thing is given a chance to set up, it becomes horrifying. And like, isn't that just what you want in a champion fight? Now, Veluza is a little harder to let go because it's a Gen 9 Pokemon. <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding. Let's get this thing out of here. I think Paldean Aquatoros would be a pretty good choice here. It's not too much better than Veluza, but it does what Veluza is trying to do better. It's got higher attack with pretty much all the stats being the same and 100 speed. You also swap the redundant psychic typing for fighting while maintaining water, so that's just a nice, safe, easy swap. And lastly, obviously, we'll swap Avalug for Satitan. We could just leave it there, slight, small changes, and just look at how vastly improved this team is. So the point I'm trying to get across with this team is that anybody that has very little knowledge of Pokemon could have made a better team than what Game Freak gave us. That is a team that takes 30 seconds to come up with. But if we really want to show just what an absolute waste Gita is, we have to build a Cynthia level team. Did you really think I was going to mention Cynthia in this video and not give this girl the team she deserves? No, the team that we deserve. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time we synthesize Gita. C Cynthia size? <laughs> Look, the goal now is to make Gita as memorable and challenging of a champion as Cynthia. And so to start, we're gonna take this stupid Glamora from her back pocket and make it her lead. Putting a toxic setter 
as your final Pokemon is the stupidest thing I have ever seen a champion do. And I say that being fully aware that Lance has three Dragonites. No, listen, you see this? Spiritomb was an iconic lead because it was formidable and worrisome. Glamora is formidable and worrisome. Does this thing look like a Garchomp to you? No, but it does kind of resemble a Spiritomb. Glamora is the perfect lead. Like sure, it's losing its Terra typing, but you want to outspeed and hit this thing with a 4x ground move? Be my guest, because even if you do, its toxic debris will activate and now you're fighting the rest of this battle with everything you switch into being poisoned. So that is our first major change to this team. Now, next I feel the need to keep a thematic sort of, let's say, elemental trio to this team. You know, some people choose water, fire, grass. Uh, Gita chose ice, water, grass. We're gonna go with fire, water, and grass. So while I love that even swapping Avalug for Satitan keeps her with a really bulky option, despite its great stats, I just think Satitan has way too many weaknesses to really make for a truly great defensive Pokemon. And so with that, we're actually doing a double swamp. We're taking out her bulky ice type and at the same time replacing her water type with the very bulky Pure Water Dondozo. It will then be given the moves Liquidation, Earthquake, Avalanche, and Body Slam. This takes advantage of its great physical attack, covers its only weaknesses, and allows it to deal out massive damage, all while filling the niche of being a very defensive Pokemon. Now, I understand the argument to be made for giving her Palafin instead of Dondozo. That would arguably be more iconic. So I don't think that it would be too strong. My problem with Palafin is that it's a little too inconsistent. Base form Paladin is pretty weak, and if it goes down before you get the swap in, like it just becomes a very free Pokemon. I don't really want to trust the eye with making those decisions, you know, not going for the flip turn. So I just think Dondozo makes for a much more consistent option on her team. Now I've thought really hard about this grass pick. And I gotta say, I still think Arbolova is the best choice. Basically, Arbolova's big thing is getting hit to activate Grassy Terrain and then using Terrain Pulse, which is now a stab 150 base power grass move. You could couple this thing with the healing move that lowers attack strength staff and maybe even light screen. That would make it so it can dish out big damage, but also live for a really long time. Maybe finish this off with a normal stab hyper voice, and that would be a very formidable Pokemon. Now, next, and this is before we finish out our elemental trio. We're gonna add Gold Dango into the mix. You see this guy right here? This is a champion team Pokemon. 550 base stat, ghost steel typing, and best, most important of all, it's super rare. No one in the game has this, but you know who should have this? A champion. It's a really strong Pokemon, but not too strong. An easy move pool could be something like Shadow Ball, its signature Make It Rain, or maybe something a little less frightening like Flash Cannon. Add some coverage or utility moves, and then consider its ability makes it immune to status moves, and you have got a very solid threat of a Pokemon. And again, I just think this would be such a good choice to help make her team a little more memorable. Now, second to last, I want to bring up Lucario. In my own head canon story that I had made, up, Cynthia's second in command, Garchomp's right hand man, was always Lucario. And I think there is only one Gen 9 Pokemon that can fill this role. Except it's actually two. Serilege and Armor Rouge were some of the most anticipated Pokemon of this release. And it frustrated me to not see either of them in any major fights. They're really strong fire Pokemon with their own unique moves, and putting each one on the team of their respective games would have been a very nice touch. They're similar enough that the teams wouldn't be too varied between games, but it would make each fight feel that much more unique. And then to keep things extra consistent, they could run their signature move, Shadow Ball or Shadow Claw, Psychic or Psyshock and Will-O-Wisp. But lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we need to give this girl a Garchomp. As I said before, Glamora is purple, but that's about the only thing it has in common with Garchomp. It's not just a bad choice for an ace, it actually makes Gita look dumb. And furthermore, I can't think of a larger atrocity committed than not relegating my main man, King Gambit, to the back of the party. First of all, 
anything this slow is going to suffer severely when it's got a 4x weakness. So putting him as the ace allows him to drastalize into pure dark type and not be such a pushover. But more so, we can now take advantage of this man's ability. As the final slot, Supreme Overlord will give all of his attacks a 1.5 times increase. Couple this with Terra Stab doing two times damage on dark moves, which is a type that hits pretty much everything neutrally, and you've got a terrifying ace that can one-shot pretty much everything. When you think about it, it's perfect. A new Pokemon from Paldia who gets stronger with every downed ally. It comes out last as the king's final stand and protector to the champion, cementing Gita as the crown champion of Paldia. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a cool champion. If you enjoyed this video, I really just like seeing my subscribe number go up, so subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.